Innsbruck in Austria is the venue for round five of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh World Cup. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven at the sliding centre that's hosted two Winter Olympic Games in 64 on a natural track and 76 on the track in which we're going to now see the second heat of the two-man bobsleigh. Alongside me, Belgian slider Anne van Nienhaus. And Anne, you drove this track this morning. It's a little different from normal, but the same names are in the frame. Exactly. In third place, we have Oscar Skibermanis, who has been doing really well all season. He's only one-tenth of a second off the lead from Francesco Friedrich. Had a great looking run, had a good start time, and he'll be looking to improve on that and maybe catch this one. In second, he's only 800s out of the lead, only 200s in front of Kibermanis is Johannes Lochner with his new brakeman Florian Bauer, pushed the fastest start time, had a great looking run, and only 800s out of the lead, out of the man who has been winning the whole season, Francesco Friedrich, again in first place, only pushed the 508, that's only the, the third fast start, start, fastest start time. That's not what we're used to. Um, but he had a great drive. Little mistakes. Maybe he can clean up on that and try to look for the track record in the second heat. Well, like you said, Francesco Frutic has been doing all the winning in two-man this season. And he leads here by a tiny margin. A tenth cover the top three. Is Dominic Dvorak out of the medal hunt or is Justin Cripps going to overhaul him? What about the rookie, Mikhail Hafer from Germany? Nick Polignato, seventh. Great run from him, from Roman Heinrich, from Mikhail Vogt of Switzerland to be tied for tenth with Justin Olsen. And look at the gaps. Hundreds of a second in some cases, no hundreds at all, covering two or three sleds. Outside the 20, Bradikin, Rona, Geiger, Popov, Silic, they don't get a second heat. So we'll go 20 down to one, or accurately tied 19th down to one, as we have three ties in the top 20. Don't ask for a selfie, I'm busy, my son. <laughs> uh, so everybody getting ready to go. And as ever, fastest sled in the first heat will go last. Just saw uh, one of the... Uh, Sled builders around sled builders. Hannes Lochner up at the top of the track was chatting with him a couple of days ago. He's not building any new sleds this year. This year he's just taking time away to think, look at what other people are doing, see if maybe it sparks a few little thoughts of genius, and then he's going to get his nose back to the grindstone next year to build sleds up to the 2022 games in Beijing. So I, I think we'll see some new sleds soon. And yeah. They'll be looking to, to find improvements and everyone wants to have the fastest sled on tour to, to make a difference at the games. He's pretty happy with his four-man sled. It's still pretty much the benchmark, but it's the two-man. He's That's what he's looking to develop next. So here's our start list then. Even a Brown of the Netherlands goes off first. Ralph Birchins of Latvia next up. Then Max Mangin off with a, a disappointing drive down to only 18th place. Korean rookie Suk in his first two-man World Cup race is second two-man race of his career. The last was over two seasons ago. And then we get down to the end, the battle for the medals with Francesco Frugic defending his lead, going last. 20 sleds in the second heat, race five for the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Even De Bruyne and Janko Francic on the line for the Netherlands. Martin Haven alongside me. And Van Nienhaus, the Belgian bobsled driver, watching the action with your coach and theirs, Tom Delahunty. What will he have told Evo to tidy up first and foremost, apart from his language, after the first heat? I think only his exit out of Kreisel, hitting that hammer before going into eight, that was his biggest mistake and that cost him a lot of speed. So if he fixes that, he'll be looking to better run. 5.24 compared to 5.27 in the first heat. Yesterday, about this time of the afternoon, we were racing women's skeleton. The track got harder and faster, so we could see it holding up well and maybe even quicker times at the end of the second heat. That's very possible. Clean-looking run at the top of the track so far. A little unstable, but no skids going into Kreisel. It's already a better looking trip, isn't it? Better out of the Chrysler as well. Exactly. And a good speed going into nine. A little bit of a rattle there. Hits the wall, but straightens it out. Didn't oversteer. Kept his cool, kept his calm and his nerve. Letting it fly in 12 and 13. This is a better looking run from Evo to Brown. 51.89. That was a better run, quarter of a second better nearly. And on the brakes again, the sled really struggling to stop. 
It is a very tough break on this sled. And we're gonna, we're also going to see this in the foreman because they dig up the track even more, leave even less ice for the brakes to dig into. The brakes don't work on the runner. It's a set of teeth that come from below. But let's take a look at the start. Evo gets in pretty nicely. Janko drops in, arms up, and then tries to get his arms down really slowly, not to rattle the sled. Little skid going out of nine, but the tap on the wall actually put him straight again. You can see his eyes leaning to the left side. Didn't even steer there into 10, did he? He was on the line he needed. Well, there'll be more work on the runners before Sam Moritz, but that was a tidy run from Ivo de Brown. And it's important that it was a tidy run for the Dutchman because he was tied to the 100th with oh, Latvia's yeah. Ralf Betsins. With Divers Springis, now they outstarted the Dutch by a tenth. Let's see if they can find a little bit more in the drive. 5.17, same getaway as the first run. A nice round curve, one and two. Little wavy in two, but enters three on the left side, just as he wants to. Green numbers means he's in the lead from 700s to 1100s up. And that's his start adventure, it's just paying off. Also a little unstable going into Kreisel. That 6-7 crossover is quite tricky, isn't it? Everybody's getting There's a away. lot of ice right there and it pushes you to the to the early entrance of Kreisel. Yeah. Decent height in corner 10. Now will he Ooh, be rattles off. Late in the labyrinth, like everybody has been today. Chops behind the Dutch by eight hundredths of a gone. second. I'm smiling for you. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's cleaner when he talks English. <laughs> Ivo de Brown has the lead. He will be no worse than 19th. And Ralph Spertsins currently in second spot. Won't drop out of the top 20. Only the 20 fastest leads get to go in the second heat. Coming out of nine, I see a lot of ice spraying up. Go straight, but then a late entrance into 10 and then long on 11, flops off and a lot of pressure and then late again in 12. And we're talking here, aren't we? That's the effects of being a few hundreds late on the steer. And it, you know, it only makes a difference of half a meter, but it's so dramatic to see. Max Manjanov of Russia, he's had a good season so far this year in the two-man. Fifth and fifth in Sigulda, sixth in Altenburg and eighth in Koenigsee. So 18th here, very disappointing first trip. Only the 20th fastest start time, so that's what Eagles will do to you. If you're not in the top starters, you won't be doing great down the bottom. Yeah. 527, just a little bit slower than their first run. Good control around curve two. Now, he only had 200 in hand over Ivo de Brown from the first heat. He got out started by 300s. Uh, so he's still behind. He'll have to find some speed in the track, but that's exactly what he's been doing now. Great speed going into Kreisel. Bit of a high line, but good control at the exit. Going late into curve eight. Not quite as quick as Evo down at the bottom. Little tidier, 9 to 10. Nice high line in 10, going middle to 11. This is going to be within a few hundreds of a second. He's 700s back at the moment. What's he got at the bottom? Evo had 120.8. He's got 122. Not enough and not soon enough. Another couple of hundred meters of ice. He might have overhauled the Dutch, but Evo moves up a spot. Tied for 19th. He'll now be no worse than 18th. And then the next couple of sleds are very close as well. Another couple of hundreds, another three, four, five can make a big difference here. Coming in Kreisel, and he's above the blue lines. It's a little bit higher than most sleds do. And just avoids hitting the wall, but has a little skid going into curve eight. And it's already, these tiny things just cost you time. Well, Andronov drops to third, might end up only 20th place in the race, but as we said, very, very tight here. There's Manny Schultz, our race director, at his birthday in Winterberg. He was 100 years old. 
Yun Jin Suk of Korea now making his two man World Cup debut this weekend. Made his four man World Cup debut in Whistler in December 2016. And his break run similarly hasn't been in the World Cup since that race in the four man sled. They've been doing North America's Cup and predominantly European tracks since then. Five twenty six, similar to their start time in the first heat, five twenty five. Now, with two brakemen pushing one at the front, one at the back, you would hope for a little bit more than that. In fact, you'd hope for a lot more than that, but maybe that'll come. It is hard to make the transition from a brakeman to a driver as well. It's just a different position pushing a sled from a push bar than, than from the back handles. Yeah. Okay, 300s over Ivo de Brown, and that is his almost entire first heat lead, and that's gone. A good height at the end of nine, and a great exit going down the middle of the straightaway. Had to work for it a little. He was just steering to get the line. 800s back. Not sure he's got the speed. 99.4 to 101 of Ivo. 52.05, so he drops back as well. And that 400s slower than Maxim Anginov. He was only 200s ahead of the Russian, so he drops four spots, or two fourth. So he drops behind the previous three sleds. Again, it's like nine pins now. It may be that first couple of sleds have got the fresh spritz, have just got a fraction more speed. You can see he's very low in the beginning, and when he releases his first pressure point, he shoots up in Kreisel. A little long on 11. And that's why he gets pushed away yeah. and has to work hard in 12. A little steer there and a big skid. Not a bad first weekend, though, for Yun Jin Suk in the two-man World Cup. Another couple of hundreds further ahead of Ivo de Brown in 16th place after the first heat, Boris Vin. When we say a couple of hundreds, he was actually, uh, what's that, six hundreds faster than Evo. Again, we're told that seven hundreds of a second is what it takes to blink a human eye, so we are talking tiniest measurable distances here. They got to a 5.22 in the first heat, the 16th fastest start time. 5.21, just a little bit faster. Well, in this field, right now, every single hundred can make the difference. And definitely on this short track. Well, we saw so with your important. first heat, when you ducked your head, you went from dead level to 100th in front of a sled, and that's the difference. That's the difference indeed. Yeah. 14 hundreds up on De Brown. Looking good at the top. Going late into Kreisel just as you want to. Didn't really seem to have a lot of speed in the sled at the bottom of the track. Maybe he was working too hard below Kreisel. Just a little drift, doesn't touch the wall. This Lower is line in 10. Decent speed, not quite as good as Evo. The gap's down to 600. This could be very close at the line. This is the toss of a coin. Who's going to be in front? Ah, oh, Rinaldi by 200s. Now, that doesn't necessarily end Evo's rise up the order either, because they're so close together. They're so close. Effectively, they're one sled. You're unlikely to slot in between them. So you're going to beat both or lose to both. And there are a few more sleds that are very close. We could see more ties coming up as well. Yep. Well, we've had our first tie. We've got a three-way tie coming up shortly. It's coming out of nine. Has a little bit, little bit of pressure that drifts him to the left side and then goes late into 10. And here drops out of 12 and jumps into 13. And that's what the ice will do to you. 1300s quicker than his first heat. That's a significant improvement over 1300 meters of ice. Rudy Ronaldi, our race leader, five down, 15 to go. USA's Cody Bascu, seventh in this race in Innsbruck, Austria last year. Round five at the BMW IVSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. I'm Martin Haver alongside me, and Van Nienhaus, the Belgian driver. And Cody with a little bit of a loose first heat. Let's see what he can tidy up, Anne. Yeah, he had a great start in the first heat, 5.14 and now 5.18, just a little bit slower. But let's see if he can control it better in this, this run. 
Gaps in this part of the field are tiny, 200 ahead of the current leader, Rudy Ronaldo of Monaco, and that's his gap now. Great transition to the tree. A little bit too early out of five. Pushed him early to six. And a lower line shooting up there in the middle of Kreisel. A little bit of the pressure at the end. A high line there. And then you drop out and have a little second pressure in curve nine. He's getting late to everything here, isn't he? And he's got to catch up with the sled. 900's back, too he's late. Kind of drop a lot of space. Up. It's so close together. Yeah. And 1,200's back costs him four spots. 52.07. There's Rudy Rinaldi on the left. Boris Vah, his brakeman, on the right of your shot. Tied with Andrianov, just like we expected some more ties. Well, empirically not a bad drive. Only 300's of a second different from his first one. But it is so jam-packed here. And they dropped four spots. You can't believe it. Just 300's difference is four spots. You can see him coming from the high line and then diving out too soon in Kreisel. And then that's why he has a little bit of the end pressure. Entrance into eight isn't bad. And then again, high line and nine coming down too soon. And then you have a little bit of a second pressure. That's why he taps on the left side. You watch the runner tips, you really see him steering it hard off there and carving the ice. So two key errors for Cody Baskin. 12th place, our Olympic silver medalist in fourth man, Yun Jung Won of Korea with Jin Su Kim behind him. A three-way tie for 12th place. Yeah, the 33-year-old. 28th, 10th and 11th here in two-man in Innsbruck in his three previous starts in World Cup. Five twenty. It's a little long on curve one. Didn't make the shortcut. But a great diagonal from two to three. Nice in middle going to curve four. And long on five. It's a good looking run. A little bit high in the beginning of Kreisel, but a great exit out of Kreisel. That's coming down to Rinaldi. Was 1100s at the start, it's 600s. Ooh, and skips out of nine. This could be very close. Big height in corner 10. What's he got in speed? Rinaldi's sled, not the fastest. Still 600s oh, wow, loose. Well. Very loose. He got away with that by the skin of his teeth. Yun Jong won at the line, 700s up, 51 96. His first heat was a 51.96, absolutely identical time of a 300 slower start. And it's still Ivo de Brown of uh, the Netherlands and has the fastest run of the heat so far. Yeah, and he's still in third place with 12 to go. Well, two more 12s to go. And you can see skidding out of nine, that costs you a lot of time. And then hits the take on of 10 a little bit too early. And then long on 12, flops off. I bet the brakeman felt his world starting to go upside down there and feared the worst for a fraction of a second. Well, there's Yun Jong Won of Korea. Ivo Danilevich down there helping with the sled. Next up is the second of our three way tie for 12th. This is Austria's Marcus Trichel, whose mum and dad both work down in race admin here at Innsbruck. Marcus Gluck, his brake man. Benny Meyer, Austria's lead driver, out for well, a greater part of the season now. He'll be calling the four-man race tomorrow with a torn hamstring. They had the 12 fastest start time of 5.19. The last few slates haven't been quite as quick. 5.17, they find a little bit more. And a great shortcut, one to two. Stays on the left side. Doesn't, like, just touches the wall going into three. Coached early in his career by Austrian Manny Meyer, now by Austrian Franz Josef Hoffmann. So if they don't know the shortcuts here in Innsbruck, no one does. A little early going into Kreisel, who controls the first wave. And a great exit out of Kreisel. Little skiddy though, down to 500s in front. Doesn't have the same speed as Evo and uh, one. Still in the lead, 500s is the gap. Needs 122s, not gonna have it. He's gonna be close, but I don't think he's gonna lead at the line. Rocking and rolling, 100th behind. He slots in behind Yun Jung Won. 
one hundredth of a second. Tied in the first heat, and then one hundredth of a second in the second heat. Yeah. And off a fractionally faster start as well. Well, they gave everything they could. One wins the first part of the three-way tie. Great looking load. You can see the focus. He's looking to the left side, trying to make the shortcut in curve one. You also seen how thin the cowl of the bobsled is. All carbon composite, so it's strong, but as light and thin as possible to give maximum room for the athletes. So there's Marcus Treichel, our third, third sled in our three-way tie for 12th. Matthias Lutja Poland with Christoph Tarkowski, fresh off a huge result in the two-man last weekend for the Poles in Koenigsegg. They were massively impressed with a seventh place after three eleventh place finishes this season. Still not bad at all. And Lutti seventh in the World Cup standings in two man. Very stable season for them. 521, only 100 after first start. Or whatever else, if they break this two way tie and stay in the lead or three way tie, they actually want to move up because their their worst so far has been three eleventh places. Nobody wants a twelfth now. A little bit high in curve four, but a good control in five. A little bit too long on six and drifts a little bit to the right side before going into Kreisel. Good exit of Kreisel. And great height there. Great exit. Going late into curve 10, controlling the height, going middle to 11. What's he got in speed? He's still behind five hundredths of a second. This is going to drop him behind one and Trichel and Rinaldi by a hundredth behind Rinaldi, but he slots in front of Ivo de Brown. So 52-04 with 11 to go. Matthias Luti is fourth, so it might be a 15th place finish. Well, them's the breaks. You don't get a great weekend every weekend. Otherwise, it's not a great weekend. It's an ordinary weekend, right? Exactly. Coming at a nine, and he's just straight drifting to the left. You can see his head leaning to the right side, like avoiding the wall. Trying and to then... lean, lean his body into the sled. Come on, come over, come over. <laughs> don't hit it, don't hit it. Well, it's, sometimes it's like riding a motorcycle. Body weight is a big part of the all-up weight of the sled, right? And subconsciously, your hands follow what your eyes are doing. So if you just look a little bit to the right side, it might just do enough to avoid the wall. Well, Poles still having a big season this year. On the fringes of the top ten, Brad Hall and Nick Gleason, his brakeman and comedy partner in one of the newest Instagram relationships. Nick and Al, you should follow them on Instagram. Their feed is hilarious. So representing three power, Nick Gleason. They got the fifth fastest start time in yeah. the first heat. They got a great getaway, 5-0-9. 5-10, that's really strong stuff off the blocks. And this time he got his push bar in before going into curve one. Brand new sled, borrowed from Benny Meyer for the weekend. They're hoping to use it a little bit more. And worth saying that he's only had two trips down the track in this sled. So by the time he gets to the end of the race, he will have double the experience that he started with. Good upper part of the track, a little early going into Kreisel. 25 hundreds up Just over Yun Chong Won. A touch on the wall before going into eight. And a great exit of nine. Little tap on the wall on the right side, but just straight. Big height in is this Benny Meyer? The big height in 10. Really nice looking run from Brad Hall of Great Britain. This is shooting to get into the top 10. That's a good run. 51-85. And that would have left him in eighth place after first heat. The smile on Lee Johnson's face. Yes, come on, you beauty. Uh, Brad nearly rips his ankle off trying to jump out of the mix. Full of sympathy, not. That's a big run from Brad Hall. <laughs> He's thanking Benji Meyer. 
and says, stay healthy. Well, become healthy. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's obviously not Get better, now. just not Get better too soon. soon. <laughs> not too soon. Here in 12, he's a little late, has to work hard, but jumps into 13. And you can see a lower line with a lot of pressure. Third two-man sled he's driven this season as well. So he's done three two-man races, three different sleds. He had a Swiss sled last weekend and an Austrian sled this weekend. Brad Hall leads, 10 down, 10 to go. And how far will that drive push him up the order? We have a very close field yet to follow. Well, well, well. <laughs> That's very entertaining. Yeah, last week, uh, a sled that uh, Billy Meyer hands loaned to them, gave to them for, for free. This weekend, Benny Meyer's sled, and Brad is absolutely buzzing off that. They really have been looking for good material, and it seems like this sled knows the lines and eagles. Well, you know, it, and it, it, he seemed to be driving it the way that Benny does by driving it as little as possible. And it's interesting, actually, you know, his advantage there the, at the line, 1700s, but he was 2500s up in a field where the sleds in the first heat were one, two, four hundreds apart. He really had a great looking second run. Yeah. We saw that from the girl we we're just looking at there, Stephanie Schneider, in heat two in the women's competition. She put in the big run. Everybody else did exactly what they'd done in the first heat within a hundredth or two. She went 12, 1300s quicker, bang. That was all it took. In a field that, <laughs> in a field that's this tight, that could be a big drive for Brad Hall. Yeah, because he's only 200s, 300s, 400s away from the guys in eight, nines, and tens. So yeah. he might move up with this run. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, fans from all over the place. We're used to seeing the Latvians, aren't we, at every track? We had Croatian fans here. Swiss girls are down at the bottom watching. Your teammates down watching as well. Don't look up here with that snow balloon in your hand, sorry, <laughs> Ads. If, if you hear a bang on the window, by the way, everybody, it's because we're a, a stationary and a very obvious target on the roof over the finish building. And it may not be entirely because we started the snowball fight. <coughs> when I say me, I don't mean Anne. It's not the first snowball fight you had. You it's, actually threw a snowball at the... It's a the, great vantage point. <laughs> that's being coached. <laughs> and the British guy took the blame for it. Uh, well, you know... Look, look innocent enough and you'll get away with most stuff in life. Great view of the start buildings here, Innsbruck in Austria. Round five of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Martin Haven and Anne Van Yenhaus of Belgium watching the action. Ten down, ten to go. Justin Olsen of the USA now. Best results on this track, a seventh place finish for Cody Baskew in recent years for US sliders. Justin Olsen though in the top ten. 5.14 in the first heat, was it eight fastest start time? Josh Williamson behind him and at the end of the run, he was looking to go into the zeros. Well, it's a 5.17. Good control in curve two, going late into three. Just minimizing the distance you drive there. A little high in four, but good control in five. And drifts to the right side before going into Kreisel. Justin Olsen, Olsen raced here a couple of weeks ago in the Europa Cup, so he's got very good recent experience of this, but it's drifting away a little. Brad Hall, oh, the what leader. A kid oh. going out of nine. Brad Hall will stay in the leader's box, but Olsen is going to sink like a stone, I'm afraid. Teammate Cody, team Cody Baskew in eighth, and he's in eighth. A three-way tie for eighth right now with Cody Baskew, Justin Olsen, and Maxim Anjanov. A shake of the head from Brian Scheimer, a laugh from British coach Lee Johnson. And as soon as the camera goes away, Lee will start the ribbing that will continue in the Sport Hotel in Eagles tonight. Definitely. Yep. You make the best of the good days and you just suck it up on the bad days when you're a coach or an athlete. Coming out of nine, he's a little bit long on there and then the back end gets caught on the wipe and it drifts to the left side and a and big skid and it just costs you so much speed there. And you're steering immediately off there to try and keep the sled straight but that didn't allow for the pressure on the back. And then goes late into 13 as well and late height and really rattles it off. Yep. Well, 18th plays again. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, we got to be better if we're going to knock it in.
don't make it your own. Exactly right. All right, so nine to go. And this is the young Swiss Mikkel Vogt with Alan Nusser behind him. Vogt is 21 years old, one year of driving sleds before this. 5.24, a little slower than their first getaway. He, fast, he started the 15 fastest start in the first heat and drove himself into ninth place, so had a really good look, good looking run. Well, the Swiss are very excited about this young man. One year on ice, he's now in the World Cup and he's hold, definitely holding his head above water. His 4-5 transition wasn't the best. And that might have cost him some speed. The gap first to second is 1,700. He's already fallen further back than that, Mikel Vogt. Not the second heat he wanted. Good exit of nine, though. Right down the middle. And he stopped the bleeding, but he's too far away. 2,800's back. He's dropping back to fourth place at the line. Where's Al when Nick and Al need to be doing another Instagram <laughs> video? Come on! So, Mikel Vogt drops to four for 52-1-1. And again, not as quick as his first heat, same as Justin Olsen. Couldn't quite keep the sled where he needed it. Comes out of nine. And he's just straight down the middle, going early to ten. Late there, but lets it run. Yeah, it's a rough transition, 12 to 13. It is, isn't it? And then jumps off again in 13. Brakeman just gets bounced right up in the air. Doesn't matter what the Brakeman weighs, how much or how little, same story. Eight to go, and this has been the big success story of the last couple of weeks. Roman Heinrich of France, fifth place in Altenburg, fourth place in Koenigsegg, a European Championship bronze medal. France's best two-man results this century. He checks with Bruno Mijon, who coaches Monaco, and uh, Bruno had top six results in four-man in the 2000s, but not in the two-man. He's not starting with his regular brakeman. Had to change them around because of an injury. 400s in hand over Brad Hall, which has all gone with a 400s slower start than the Brits, but 400s faster than their own previous getaway. So first, two, first time he's pushed with Lionel Nefev in the two-man. Well, he pushed with Lionel uh, the last couple yeah. of seasons, so he was his regular brakeman before uh, he, he became the French number one pilot. 1300s back, so he's bringing it back towards Brad Hall of Great Britain. 1200s. Great speed, 100 kilometers an hour. Only Eva de Brown has been quicker. A little touch on the wall before going into 10 and the lower line there. This is going to be in single digits, isn't it? One way or the other. Down to 800s. Here comes Roman Heinrich. France versus Britain, the old rivals. Very close at the line, and it's a tie! <laughs> He really found the speed at the bottom of the track. That is great stuff, both for Brad Hall and for Roman Heinrich. And Lionel Lefebvre stops him just before the rubber, but no, 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 hold on to the brakes. Do not jump out. I know it's enticing. Got to keep those brakes dug into the ice. Super indeed. And they've got a brand new four-man sled to play with tomorrow. Well, look at the way he gets in. Feet onto the driver's seat back, which is tiny. It's only a few centimetres high. Just to brace yourself. And then drops in. It is very narrow to get in for big guys like that. Okay. Hitting the push bar. Yeah, push bar in with his in. right hand, so he can't get his left hand in. OK, seven to go. This race is only going to get tenser. Roman Heinrich and Brad Hall lead from Yun Jong Won and Marcus Treichel. Nick Polignato, the first of our two Canadian sleds in the top seven. Really nice looking run from Polignato, but not great speed at the bottom. 5.12. Yep. Just the same as they did in the first run. And a good control around the first two curves of the track. Letting it run nicely into three, going middle to four. 500s to 400s in front of the tie for the lead. This could end up a three-way tie easily. 
99 kilometers now. Good speed. Great exit out of Kreisel. Not the same speed as the French guys. No. A little high there. Whoa. But avoids the skid. High line in 10. Good that, exit. That works well for him. 800 up, still in front. He's going to lead here, surely. 120s at the bottom, that's enough. Polignato will be no worse than eighth. 51 8 1. That is the fastest run of the heat so far. So only three sleds have broken the 52 second barrier. 51 8 1 for Polignato. 51 8 9 for Roman Heinrich. 04. 51 8 5 for Brad Hall. And a 51 8 9 for Ivo de Brown. He came out of nine a little bit too soon, and that's why he got the second pressure and then drifted to the left side in the straightaway. Nick Polignato from Hamilton, Ontario. Benjamin Coatwell from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Next up is our relative rookie, Christoph Harfer. Started his two-man World Cup career with a double race weekend in Segulda because Hansi Lochner wasn't there. Now, having replaced Lochner because of lack of fitness, he's replacing Nico Valter because Valter is hamstrung, literally tore his hamstring in the two-man race last weekend in Koenigsegg. Well, Harper, the two-man and four-man Europa Cup champion, showed in the first heat he's more than capable of fighting for medals. 519, little improvement on their first start. And this is a big chance for Harper, isn't it? This is not going to be a one-off because next week in San Moritz, suddenly Nico's hamstring isn't going to be fixed. No, but Nico is here for training and I think he's going to drive the four men okay. uh, because he has three guys pushing him then. All helps, keeps the points up for the nation. Great looking line so far and really high speed going into Kreisel. 500 up, 99.4, only Anginov was quicker. Fastest speed was De Brown, he's tied it. Just a little touch on the wall before going into eight and a perfect exit of nine. Looks like veteran lines here. This is really nice from Christoph Harfer of Germany, pulling away fast. This is a challenge to move up ahead of the Olympic champion. It's a big gap to Justin Cripps, but 51-7-1, top six finish. Great looking run. Yeah, and big applause, and rightly so. Well, he was seventh in the first race in Segulda, bronze medal in the second, his second ever World Cup start, and he's guaranteed a top six finish in his third. He is the full, fully finished article, isn't he? And here you see him coming out of Kreisel, and then drifting to the left side, and just hitting the hammer, and then you can see the brakeman jumping up. Oh, and a lot of steering at the exit of nine, but he gives it back at the right time and just straightens out right in the middle of the straightaway. All the instincts, all the reflexes are right. On the left, Christopher Harper. On the right, Matthias Sommer, your race leaders with five to go. Five left, Christoph Harfer leading in Innsbruck from Nick Polignato. Two Olympic champions still in the field. The first of whom is this man, the international man of mystery, Justin Cripps. Cripps and Cam Stones, two silver medals in their two World Cup starts so far, Altenberg and Koenigsey. My partner in the broadcast booth for the women's race, Graham Richardson, yelling them off at the top. 5.13, a little slower than their first start. A only, little wavy in two as well. And only fifth after the first heat. He's led after the first heat in the last two outings. Going middle to curve four, a little high there. And early out of curve five. Late entrance in six and then had to work hard. Hits the wall on the right side before going into Kreisel. 1500s over half are from the first heat. And how much of that is left? Great okay. exit there. Good speed, half was a fraction quicker. Cripps keeping himself in front, but this is enough to fight for the medals. Gap's coming down, he was 1500s up. Trying to let it fly, he was quick at the bottom last time. He is again, 122-0, 51-7-0. A tenth slower than his first heat though. And then that might have robbed him of a third straight medal. 
Cam Stone's hanging onto the handles, looking around, waiting for the boys to get there. It is such a tricky outrun. Yeah. So Justin Cripps leads, but not one to go anymore. Today, still four to go. And he got high in six in the middle and then hold it off, touch the wall on the right side, going into Kreisel. And here's in Kreisel. Thanks for watching. I know in CBC, I think Helen Upton will be covering there. So she'll be looking forward to seeing how he fares. Four to go. This could be another huge story. We've had lots of small nations making big, big waves this season. Dominic Dvorak in the Czech Republic has already had some very solid results in two and four man. This could be a huge one for Dvorak. Fourth in the season opener in Segulda. 1900s off the lead, 200s ahead of Justin Cripps from the first heat. And watch these boys start. They had an impressive 5.07 in the first heat. And 5.05. .05. That's as fast as anybody has started here today. It was a little drift just before one, but he corrected it well. Didn't hit anything. And good control in the upper part of the track. Nice, quiet hand. 1700s up on Justin Cripps. He was 200 in front of the Canadian from heat one. A little drift going out of six and a lower line in Kreisel. But good control. Cuts a little more ice, but covers a meter less distance, maybe. 1300s up. Going Needs... late in 10, but a great height there. Needs really big speed at the bottom. 400s. Needs huge speed at the bottom, Dominic Dvorak. This is going to be close, but he'll be behind at the line. He is 51.77. Cripps is leading with three to go. Dominic Dvorak in second. Another top five finish. Might yet equal his career high of fourth in Segulda. What a season he's having so far. Dominic Dvorak from the Czech Republic, fifth in the World Cup standings. Fourth, sixth, and then 13th and 14th the last couple of weekends. Now he's back to where he was in Segulda. He shrugs his shoulders like, that was a great run. I don't know where I lost my spot. Yeah. But then you saw them punch the air as the guys told them what the start was, 5.05. Oh, yeah. But here, that's that's the only mistake he made. Yeah. He had to work too hard to get it out of nine. And he doesn't skip, but that was just a lot of steering going on at the end of curve nine. Great hide in 10. Nice, nice work again from Dominic Dvorak in the Czech Republic. Second by 500 with three to go. Oscar Skibermanis of Latvia. Third place after the first heat of our two-man race in Innsbruck. Last weekend in Koenigsegg, fifth place was his first non-podium finish of the year. Will he hang on for his fourth medal in five outings in the two-man? Oh, 508. Big start, 508, same as their first heat. And a good control in curve two. Drifting late to enter curve three. Only a tenth off the lead held by Francesco Frigic in the first heat. Looking great at the top of the track. Nice long line on five. A bit of a lower line in six. And then high in Kreisel. Shoots the exit. Oh, and a bit of a drift going out of nine. Gaps Corrects it down. well. Into 10, where's he gonna be? 1400s, that's enough surely, unless he crashes in the labyrinth. He's gonna lead from Justin Cripps. Guarantee himself at least his fourth medal of the season, 1100s up. Now he was only a 10th out of the lead in the first heat. How close will it be? I try to do that as a driver as well, to park it on the left side so it gets yeah. easier to go out. But if you have that much speed and you hit the wall, that one hurts. Yeah. 51.70. He did a 51.49 in the first heat. And he drifts off six and hits the wall before going into Kreisel. Comes out of nine. And then the back end gets caught on the wipe again. A little bit skit. And then you can see him play with the runner tips to straighten it out. And you can see he wants to park it on the left side and then hits the wall 
<laughs> well, Cripps, Dvorak and now Kiba Manis, all in the 51-7s, having set 50s and 46, 49 in the first heat. So is the track holding up or has it lost a bit of speed or are they just making mistakes? Let's find out. Two to go, both Germans. Hansi Lochner has finished exactly one two-man race this season and that was a bronze medal finish, I beg your pardon, a silver medal finish last time out. It was a bronze, wasn't it, last week? Couldn't get in. He slipped on his last step and fell with his belly onto the sled. It still was a 5.05 start, but lots of momentum will have gone as they wrestled the sled to, for Hansi to get back in. And that's a lot of adrenaline going to your body if you're head first into your sled. Wow. But he's opened up his margin over Kiba Manis from two to eight hundreds to eleven hundreds. Longer doesn't care about Kiba Manis. There's only one man he wants to beat. He's the man everyone wants to beat. It's the man everyone has to beat. Little Skid, nine to ten. Great height there, diving out. Still building the lead. Fastest sled so far. 122-1 is the top speed at the bottom. He's not going to be quite there. 51-5-3, 500 slower than his first heat. The last three sleds have been in the 70s. Not much wrong with the track then. And they're very pleased with that result. I think Hansi thinks that was a really good run, and I'm not sure it's up to us to argue. <laughs> Yeah, he's laughing with it too. You can see him slip on his last step and just Swan dive. Flat. That's a belly flop. That's not even a dive. And wow. you don't think about it. You just find a way to throw your feet forward and get into the sled anyway. But he's pulling the sled. And to get him forward, he's pulling the sled backwards. He's taking energy out. But you know, only Hansi could laugh it off the way he does. There's his Breakman, Florian Bauer. Now, they're going to be in the medals, but will it be silver or gold? Francesco Friedrich took gold here in the World Cup in 15-16, in the Worlds in 16, and in the last two World Cup races. Four straight wins in Innsbruck. Oh, four straight wins this season. 5.03, wow. a huge start. But how he might much? Have ran it just a little bit too far. How much does it cost? He was a tenth up. So this is either Bavaria or Saxony to win this. He's still only a tenth up from a faster start. Friedrich now has to drive this to win. Still a tenth up at the Kreisel. 99.5 and a great exit. Perfect. 100.3, fastest sled we've seen. Quicker even than Lochner. And that's a great exit as well. Going late into 10, taking the high line, and now he's just going to run, run away with it. Closing on his fifth straight win of the season, his fifth straight win in Innsbruck. He wins again, 51-46. Applause from his teammates. Francesco Friedrich, the fastest run in the first heat, and his second run was quicker than anybody managed all day. The fastest two runs down the track, do it again. The Michael Schumacher of bobsledding wins again, and that is his 35th two-man win in Europa Cup, World Cup, Junior Worlds, Senior Worlds, and Olympic Games. He's won them all. Win number 35, and that's in two-man alone. I'm going to have to go back through the records for tomorrow to find out how many four-man wins he's got under his belt. Five straight here in Eagles, five straight here this season. And they really ran it far. Didn't have his hands on the steering before going into one. And just avoids hitting the wall before two as well. Hi there in the middle of Kreisel, but just a perfect exit of nine and lets it run in the labyrinth. And he doesn't win at a cruise. He wins by going faster, by taking risks. That was a big risk to run it that far. It could have gone really badly wrong. Francesco Friedrich, though, wins it from Hansi Lochner and Oscars Kieber Manis. Justin Cripps, fourth. Dominic Dvorak, a great fifth. Fantastic fifth, sixth from Christoph Harfer. And then the French and the Brits tied in eighth between Nick Polignato and young John Wan.
Good runs from Mikel Vogt, from Rudy Rinaldi, Matthias Luti, even a Brown pulling himself up the order as well in the second heat. Well, breathless stuff again, and another tightly packed field, and some very close margins. And again, Friedrich finds something special. He just has an incredible season. He is the man to beat. And the other man in the rainbow hat, Torsten Margis, not doing too badly in the starts to medals and wins ratio either as a brakeman. I think they were eager to improve on their start. 508 in the first one weren't the fastest starters, and that's not what we're used to from Francesco and Torsten. Well, Friedrich, since he left European Cup racing, has won 25 two man races, 15 of them, in fact, 26 now, 16 of them with Torsten Margis. Ain't so shabby. All right, he's won 10 with other brake men, but Torsten, you know, developing into the go to guy. Developing, developed. He is the go-to guy. They have great chemistry and it's just working together. Yeah. Martis Mickness looking for something. They're down back, I think, with the warm weather clothing in because it ain't warm out there. It's bright and sunny, but not where we are. It's crispy. So they'll do their quick interview live on uh, ARD. Austrian television down here this weekend as well. Great to see Christina Hengster back at the bobsled track. She retired after the games. There she is in the red jacket in the distance. She's their expert analyst for the weekend here. So former Austrian driver had her share of medals on this track. But like every track, you know, whether you love it or not, sometimes it's a great place to be, sometimes it's heartbreak, isn't it? You know, even, the, even your favorite track can break your heart occasionally. And that's the great thing about bobsleigh and skeleton. Every race has to be done, and there can always be surprises. You can always do much better than you expect, or vice versa. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, right now in two-man, Francesco Friedrich feeling no pain. He's won five races this season, and with the Olympic Games, his last six straight outings in a two-man. Beautiful Austrian Tyrol Mountains fringing the Olympic city of Innsbruck. And here, after five races in the BMW IBZF two-man bobsled World Cup, Francesco Friedrich still with a perfect score. That's what it looks like. Five wins is 1,125 points. Oscar's keeper man is second. Max Manjanov still in third ahead of Dominic Dvorak in the Czech Republic. Then Marcus Trichel in sixth. Matthias Lutu Poland in seventh. Fantastic stuff from some of our young sliders, some of our new teams. Look at Roman Heinrich. He's only done three World Cup races this season. He's already tied for 13th spot. But again, a fifth straight win here in all competitions in Innsbruck. A fifth straight win in two-man in the World Cup this season. Francesco Friedrich does it again. And again, finds something special and in the second heat. Just had a great exit of Kreisel, a great exit of nine. And those are the key points here to, to gain the speed. And that's what he did. Look, it's not about making mistakes. We've seen him make mistakes in almost every run, but he never makes the same mistake twice, and he tidies them up to make things look even better. So as the sun starts to sink, the uh, city will come alive, and we look forward to tomorrow's action in the four-man competition. You're going to hit the road and head to... Gee, Samaritz, that's going to be tough, isn't Horrible it? Place. A week, a week there. Uh, it, it only hurts you in the pocket. Everything else is wonderful about being in Samaritz. Third place there for uh, Martis Mignis on the right and Oscar's keeper Manis. I've stopped saying Mel Bardis this weekend. On the left-hand side is Hansi Lochner and Florian Bauer, and your race winners Torsten Margis. And Francesco Friedrich. Congratulations to all three of them. They will be back in action again next week on the longest, the oldest, the only natural, the most glamorous and glorious track on the planet, Samaritz. But before that, it is four-man day here at Olympia World Innsbruck on Sunday. And Friedrich and Lochner and Kieber Manis will be again amongst our favourites. Thanks to Anne Van Nuenhaus again for words of wisdom. Thanks to the IBS TV crew once more for fantastic pictures. And thanks to you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. We're on air at 1400 local, 1300 GMT for the first of our two four-man heats. See you then. Till then, Alvina Sengor Scott, goodbye.